Well, glad to have you with me tonight. Thank God for another day, another night that we can come together to study the Word of God. Welcome to a study in the Word, because we believe that it's the Word of God that has kept us. It's the Word of God that's going to bring us through this situation that we're in with this pandemic and all that's happening in the world with the brutality, the violence, and the, and the, and the, the coronavirus, and all this stuff, the racism. It's the Word of God that has preserved us and it's the Word of God that's going to bring us through. So welcome to another study in the Word. We thank God again for our, our, our intercessory prayer team, those warriors that come together every Thursday evening from 6 to 7 just to pray for you, to pray for the church, to pray for the world, to pray for the United States of America, our leaders, and we thank God for them. And I speak blessings on them and their household. Glory to God. But they are the frontline warriors. They are the ones that are standing in the gap. So we thank the Lord again. But before we get into it tonight, let's welcome His presence. Let's just welcome the presence of the Lord. Yes, God, we welcome your presence right now because you recognize that we can do nothing without you. And God, I demonstrate my dependency upon you. I have nothing to give to people but your word, God. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. God, that I will speak clearly with plain, understandable wisdom, God, your wisdom, God. God, that you get the glory. And God, help us to come to the place of being the people that you desire us to be in these last days. Continue to reveal your word to us, God. Reveal it to me and I'll reveal it to the people. God, that you get the glory. I claim a harvest tonight. I claim a harvest from the world. I claim a harvest from the church tonight. God, that you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. So we thank the Lord again for the power of prayer, you know, because prayer is our weapon. Prayer is our mainstay right now. I'm telling you, it's what's going to bring us through. It's what has kept us, and God's going to be glorified. So we thank the Lord for you. Pray that you're still keeping yourself safe, and you're, and you're dealing with this vaccine as the Holy Spirit leads you, because, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we wish we didn't have to do, but almost we're in a situation. Uh, we've got a situation that we either take it or, or we, we be exiled. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so you got to just trust God with this vaccine. Amen. Like I have, you know thank the Lord for, for it because, you know, it's the way that man has, God has given man the wisdom to do this. So we've got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And you follow God. I'm not telling you to take the vaccine. I'm not telling you to take the shot, but you follow the Holy Spirit and God will protect us and he will see us through. So tonight, we're going to get right into what we're going to share with you tonight. And we're coming out of the book of Revelation tonight. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Some people say, oh, Revelation. Oh, yeah, yeah. The book of Revelation, you see, because this is so important. There's so much in this book that we need to know now. There's so much in the book of Revelation that we need to be exposed to now. And I thank God for the Spirit of God, for the Holy Ghost and fire that reveals truth. Because the Holy Spirit wrote the book. He wrote the Bible. He wrote the book of Revelation. But he will give us basic understanding of God's truth. Because we have need of these now. Amen. So the revelation, the revelation was given to John the Apostle when he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And in and, 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 and chapters 2 and 3, God gave John the revelation of the church age. From the first century church to the beginning of the church, which started with the church in the book of Acts, right on through the church, the last church that will be on the earth just before Jesus comes. And you see, we are that church that it will be just well will be on the earth just before the Lord Jesus Christ comes. So the church age, or the words, these seven churches, because there's seven churches that are mentioned here, covers from the beginning of the church up until the end of the church, which is the day in which we live. So it's a a panoramic view and a and a and a prophetic history of what the church would be like. And uh, we're at. That last church age, we are, in other words, we are at that last church stage, which is the church of Laodicea. Now, of the seven churches, there was only one church that Jesus had no rebuke for. In other words, it was only one out of seven that Jesus counted to be acceptable and he had no rebuke for. And I want you to know that if you look at that percentage, it will let us know that on the earth today, there's only one out of seven churches that's really real. 
there's only one out of every seven churches that's really real. You know, we got a lot of churches. Some folks, we got a church on every corner. But there's only one out of seven that's real. Why? Because there's only one out of seven in the scriptures here that Jesus had no rebuke for. And that, that, that real church was the church of Philadelphia. It was the church of Philadelphia. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost, you see, because he reveals these things to us. And we must know uh, what the true church should be. But we also must know what the Laodicean church is all about. Why? Because Jesus prophesied that the church, the last day church, would be a Laodicean church. Now, Laodicea was a city in Asia Minor. It was a prosperous city. It was like, oh, you could say like a New York City of today. Oh, it was like uh, South Carolina of today. In other words, prosperity was everywhere. Financial prosperity, material prosperity. The people prospered in so many different areas, and they prospered in every way to the point that they had they had exchanged God's presence for prosperity. In other words, they pushed Jesus out, and they welcomed the, the prosperity that Jesus gave them. In other words, they got rid of the giver, and they started worshiping the gift. And you see, this is where we are because this is the church that that had plenty. This is the church that had mega. I mean, they had money to burn. I mean, they had cars. They had they had wealth. They had they had they had businesses, and they had they had material things. But it caused them to be found in a lukewarm state. And I want you to know, we have today a coexisting of the true church, and that one true church in the in the Book of Revelation is the Church of Philadelphia. The Church of Philadelphia. There was no rebuke. God, God had nothing but good words, good, good things. Jesus had nothing but good words to say about that church because that was the church of brotherly love. That was the church that really demonstrated the, the brotherly love as well as the agape love of God to God first. Love for God first, then love for people. The Philadelphia church was the, was the one true church out of the seven. And I want you to know, you know, a, a true church, a real church is hard to find. Glory to God, because we got a lot of Protestant denominations that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, and then we got a lot of religion that has 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 people in it that call themselves saved, but they lukewarm. I say they lukewarm. Now we gotta we gotta break this thing down tonight. You're gonna know what cold is, you're gonna know what hot is, and you're gonna know what lukewarm is. Now if you're lukewarm, you better get right. Hallelujah! If you're lukewarm, you better better repent because Jesus is coming. And, and, he, and don't let him find you lukewarm. I said, don't let him find you lukewarm. Because this is, this is so important for us to know in the time in which we live. And, and, you, and you see, uh, the, the word Laodicea means the people rule. In other words, or the people speak. In other words, in other words it's, 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 a, it's a church where the people are in charge of their own lives. And where the people are actually in charge of the corporate church. In other words, you see, because Jesus uh, sent his message to the, to, the, to the angel of the church of Laodicea, as he said to the angel of all these churches. Now, the angel here really means messenger. It doesn't mean uh, a supernatural being like an angel in heaven or an angel around the throne of God. It's talking about messenger because the word angel means messenger. Jesus sent this message to the leader of the Laodicean church, as he sent all of his messages to the leaders of these churches. And I want you to know, if you are a church leader, you need to hear this. You need to pay attention to this because I want you to know Jesus addressed the leader of the church. And I want you to know, if the leader is cold, the church will be cold. If the leader is hot, the church will be hot. And if the leader is lukewarm, the church will be lukewarm. And I do believe that this Laodicean church was led by a lukewarm leader. A lukewarm leader will produce lukewarm people. Hallelujah. Like I said, that anointing that's on that leader is going to get on the people. And if that anointing is contaminated with lukewarmness, you're going to have a contaminated people. Glory to God. So, 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 so this is so important. This is so important that we understand the three conditions of the church. And we're going to use for a subject tonight, three spiritual conditions, cold, hot, and lukewarm. Every person falls in one of these categories. You're either cold, you're either hot for God or you're lukewarm. And, and we need to know what each position or each spiritual condition and how it's described. So you got it, so you can know where you are. I said, so you can know where you are. You see, because God wants us hot. God wants us to be carriers 
of the Holy Spirit's fire. Like I told you on Sunday, this past Sunday, we got to be, be carriers of this fire in order to be hot. But I want you to know, the last day church, Jesus described the church of Laodicea, which means the people speak or the people rule. That means the kingdom of God is not in rulership, but people are ruling them li their lives themselves. They're not being led by the Holy Ghost. They're not even allowing their spiritual leader to lead them in the way of God. They're making, they're making their own decisions. They're making their own choices. They, they're doing what they want to do. They're doing their thing. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know it's your thing. You can do what you want to do. But I want you to know you better make sure you be doing what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. You see, because it's the people rule. It's the people rule. I don't know where that came from. Oh, Isley Brothers saw just came in there. Hallelujah. Sure, sure. It's your thing. You can do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, but you better choose to do the will of God. You better choose to do the will of God. Make the will of God your thing. Hallelujah. You see, because if you don't, you'll be lukewarm. And there's a danger to being lukewarm. Okay? Laodicean, the Laodicean condition of the church is the church as a condition of the majority of people who call themselves Christian. Now, I'm going to say that again. Now, I'm going I'm I'm to take my time with this tonight because this is so important. The Laodicean church is the majority of the of, of the of the people who call themselves Christians. The majority of people who call themselves Christians are really lukewarm. And lukewarm is worse than being cold. And I'm going to tell you why tonight. Lukewarm is worse than being cold. Now I want you to know uh, and, and see cuz only uh, as if one in seven churches are for real, only one out of three people are for real with God. Only one out of three people is pleasing to God. Because you're either cold, you're hot, or you're lukewarm. So if you're cold and lukewarm, you're displeasing to God. And that, that one-third are the ones who are hot. Hallelujah. Only one out of every three people who call themselves Christians are for real. And now, now we got to get into this because this is so important. And like I said, the message is to the angel of the churches. And, and, and every, every, every uh, church is addressed with to the angel of the church of Ephesus, to the angel of the church of Sardis, to the angel of the church of Pergamos. Now that word angel just means messenger. It's not talking about an angelic being. It's not talking about a seraphim or a cherubim. It's talking about the one that has been assigned as the leader of that church. Now, if you are a church leader, you need to pay attention to this. You need to, you need to examine your life, and we need to examine our life. And I examine my life every day. I say, God, show me anything in my life that will defile. I repent on a daily basis. You see, because if a leader is hot, the church is going to be hot. If the leader is cold, the church is going to be cold. And if the leader is lukewarm, guess what? You know, the, you know the drill. The church will be lukewarm. Why? In other words, lukewarm leaders produce lukewarm people. And you see, Jesus was addressing a lukewarm leader who was the leader of the church of the Laodicean. See, he didn't address the committee. He didn't address the board of deacons. He, he, didn't, he didn't address the mother's board or the deacon board. He addressed the messenger, the leader. You see, because God is looking to that leader to bring the church into what he would have it to be. So, 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 so no, no, this is important. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, and we're going to read from Revelation chapter 3 and beginning with verse number 14, looking at the Laodicean church. Remember, I told you that Philadelphia church was that hot church. That Philadelphia church was the only church that Jesus had no rebuke for. The Philadelphia church was the only church Jesus didn't have to tell them to repent. Why? Because they lived a repentant lifestyle. They lived a repentant lifestyle, and their sins was under the blood of Jesus Christ daily. And that's what a hot believer should do. That's what a hot church should be. A repenting daily. Keep the blood of Jesus Christ over your life on a daily basis. So that we, that when he comes, he'll look at your life. He'll look at, 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 at a harvest center church and all the other churches who are hot, and he'll have no rebuke. And he won't have to tell us to repent because we'll all we're already be clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. Let's go right into it. And it says, Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Look how, now, 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 with every church, Jesus describes himself in a manner to that church. 
that fits what he wants in that church. In other words, he describes himself as what he wants us to be. And he says here to the messenger or to the leader of the church of the Laodicea and saith him, he, he that is, he, he that is, uh, thus saith, uh, saith the amen, first he describes himself as the amen. What does amen mean? Amen means I buy the truth. I accept the truth. In other words, we got to accept the truth. He says, I'm the one who are telling you, you got to accept the truth. Because when you say amen, that's when you accept truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whenever you say amen, you accept truth. Hallelujah. Somebody need to be saying amen right now. Hallelujah. Because when you say amen, you would have accepted the truth. So he describes himself as the one who accepts the truth. That it, that's what he wants us to be. Then he also describes himself as the faithful and true witness. The faithful and true witness. Why? Because the Laodicean church was not a faithful and true witness. The Laodicean church was not one who accepted the truth. He was, it was not an amen church. They didn't accept the truth. At least that, that, they didn't live it. Because the only way you can prove that you accept truth is that you live it. you got to demonstrate it in your lifestyle. And then he says, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The beginning of the creation of God. In other words, he wants us to have new beginnings. And he wants us to be new creations in God. Hallelujah. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things pass away and all things become new. He wants us to become new creations. Hallelujah. So see, see this Laodicean church did not demonstrate these characteristics. They were not uh, acceptors of truth. At least they didn't live it. They were not faithful and true witnesses. In other words, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, people who are Laodicean, they don't witness. They don't tell nobody about Jesus, and their lifestyle not re not even a good witness, and, and, and they're not living as if they have been created a new creation. Then he says in verse 15, Hallelujah! I'm gonna touch if I walk this verse by verse here. He says. I, uh, 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 he says, I know thy works that thou art neither cold or hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Now, now, Jesus, he let, he let this church know. He let this leader know. I know all about you. I know what you've been doing. I know how you've been living. I know your lifestyle. He says, I know thy works. And then Jesus said, I also know it, that you're not hot and you're not cold. Glory to God. He said, you're not hot and you're not cold. And you see what disgusts the Lord so much, what made him so disgusted, that they were in between. You don't want to be in between. Lukewarm is to be in between. You're not hot. You're not, you're not on fire for God, but yet you're really not cold. Now, a lukewarm person is a person who was once on fire for God, but they lost that intensity. They lost that fire. They lost that eagerness. They lost that zeal. They have, they have, they have, they have become to a state of being lukewarm. And I want you to know, lukewarm is not where God wants us to be. And, and the sad part about it, most people who call themselves Christians are really lukewarm. Most people who call themselves Christians today are really lukewarm. That's why God's having me teach this to bring us out of this lukewarm state, so that when Jesus comes. He won't find us lukewarm. He won't find you and me lukewarm. He wants us to be hot and on fire. He says, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. Then he said in verse 15, I would that thou wert cold or hot. In other words, Jesus said, I, 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 I desire you to be cold than to be lukewarm. You see, because lukewarm, to be lukewarm is worse than being cold. And then we're going to explain that in just a little bit. He said, so then because thou art lukewarm, uh, Revelation 3.16, and this is one of the 316s right here. Revelation 3.16, he says, So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Okay, now this is this is rejection by, by, by uh, much of the church. This is rejection by Jesus, by some uh, rejection of people who think they're saved. There's some people who think they're saved Jesus would say, I'm going to spit you out. Why? Because you make me sick. You turn my stomach. You make me vomit. In other words, because of your lukewarm state. Jesus said, I'd rather, I'd rather you be cold. Okay, now, what is cold? Cold is to be lost and don't know God. You just don't know God. You just as lost as a goose in a fog. 
You don't know God. You don't know Jesus. You don't know spiritual things. And you don't care. Hallelujah. You live, you live like you're lost and you love living like you're lost. In other words, that's just a lost person who don't know God. You're cold. You're cold. Don't you know? Don't you know? There's some, you got some cold churches. Hallelujah. If you got cold churches, that means you got cold leaders. In other words, I believe there's some leaders, people, lead, men, uh, men and women leading churches. They're not even born again. Uh, hallelujah. Why? Because, because, because of the cold state. They still live in that worldly lifestyle. He says, he says, because thou art, uh, he said, because thou art neither cold or hot. He said, I would that you were cold or hot. That tells me that lukewarm is worse than being cold. You see, because a cold person, they know they, they know they don't know God. They know they lost. That's the way you and I lived before we got saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lived it up. We lived for the weekend, man. That's all, that, that's what it was all about. God had no place in our lives. God was no way around us. We didn't love God. We didn't want God. Hallelujah. We, we, just, wanted, we just wanted our own self-life. Glory to God. We were the God in our life. And that's the way a cold person is. And, and, and one thing about a cold person, they don't pretend. Hallelujah. They're a rot gut sinner. Man, they're wide open with it, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they're on their way to hell going 90 miles an hour. In other words, and, 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 because they're not going to pretend. You see, because Jesus said, I'd rather you be cold. Why? Because if a person is cold, that individual is a better candidate for being born again and being on fire for God than the person who's lukewarm. Why? Why? Because that person know they're not right. The cold person know he's not right. She knows she's not right. And that's why maybe some of you out here tonight, you you just, you know you're not right. You know your life's not right. You could just be in that cold state. Hallelujah. But I want you to know, God's going, God wants to bring you out of that cold state. Because Jesus said, I wish that you were cold or hot. Why? Because being cold in Jesus' eyes is better than being lukewarm. Because he says, he says it because thou art lukewarm, verse 16, thou art lukewarm. Now, what is lukewarm? Lukewarm means that, that you were once on fire for God, but your fire has gone out. Hallelujah. Your lamp was once burning, but your lamp has gone out. And the bad part of a lukewarm person is deception. In other words, they have gone cold and they don't even know it. They have gone. They have. They have gone. They have gone lukewarm, and they don't even know it. Their lamps have gone out, and you can say they've gone cold because they're backslidden. Hallelujah! You see, they they openly backslidden, and, and you see their lamps have gone out. The fire is not there. The excitement is not there. The zeal is not there. The intensity for serving God is not there, because they're now in a lukewarm state, because they didn't keep the fire burning. They didn't keep the fire burning. They allowed outside conditions to come in and take the place of the fire of the Holy Spirit and they have accepted and welcomed other things as God in their life. Lukewarm. The danger of being lukewarm is a person can think they're right with God, but they've been deceived and they're out of right relationship with God. That's why, that's, this, is why this is why lukewarm is worse than being cold. Because they think they're all right. The individual thinks he's all right. That leader thinks he's pleasing God. That disciple thinks he or she is pleasing God. But, but the reality of it is, Jesus, I know your works. I know all about you. They have came to that lukewarm state and they're displeasing to God. He said, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. And this is, what, this is where the danger is. Verse 16, Jesus said, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. And he said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. You see, because the lukewarm person is very disgusting to the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, they, they're, they're, not, they're not hot and they're not cold. They're like, they're like in between. And God don't want no in between. He'd rather you either be cold or rather you be hot. Because if you're cold, you, you stand a chance. Hallelujah, you stand a chance of recognizing your coldness and coming to Jesus. But if you're lukewarm, you don't think you need nothing. <laughs> you think you're all right. You, 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 you say, Holy Ghost fire, I don't need that. What he's talking about, I don't need no fire. I'm saved. I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad. Yeah, are you sure about that? You don't want to be in a lukewarm state of being deceived. Because if your fire is not burning bright, you have become lukewarm. He says, he says, he says, uh, he says, because thou sayest, uh, uh, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. 
I'll spew you out of my mouth. Now, now this state of lukewarmness is described in Scripture. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, where, where, where Paul describes really the lukewarm church. As you see, this is where we're at. The majority of what we have on the earth today that calls themselves church or Christianity is in a lukewarm state. Because that's the state that Jesus said the church would be in just before he returned. Now, I know we've got, we've got some on-fire people, that, that Philadelphia people that are still here, a part of the church. But they're coexisting with the people who are lukewarm. Hallelujah. You see, because you can have lukewarm people in a hot church. Hallelujah. Lukewarm people in a hot church. You say lukewarm people in a hot church. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You got some folks in church, they don't want to pray. They don't want to be, they don't want intercession. They don't, they, they want to pray only when they get in trouble. And you see, and when they, and when you lukewarm, when you pray from a lukewarm position, your prayer is, is, is invalid. You see, because your, the heart's not right. And you see, you cannot, you cannot live wrong and expect to pray right. You see, because when you lukewarm, your prayers are defiled. In other words, you're coming from a position that Jesus uh, is disgusted with. You see, because, uh, but the sad part about it, much of the church, much of what we call Christianity in America is a lukewarm church. Why? Because Jesus said it would be lukewarm just before he returned. Now, now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul describes this lukewarm condition. And, and he says here, he says, that the notice that in the last days, 2 Timothy 3.1, 2 Timothy 3.1, know that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Other words, you see, because Paul's talking to the church, Paul's talking to the believers. Believers will be, he said, lovers of their own selves. Lukewarm people love themselves. They, they make their own decisions. They call the shots. In other words, the people speak. The people rule. In other words, people who rule their own life and don't, and don't have place for God or the Holy Ghost or the Word of God to direct them. He said, lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. That's a lukewarm state. That's a lukewarm state. Disobedient to parents, it doesn't mean like a child disobeying his parents at home. It means disobedient to spiritual parents. In other words, you don't want to hear what your spiritual mom and dad got to say. Hallelujah. You just want to go your own way and do your own thing and disobedient. And, and then they become unthankful and they become unholy. Ungrateful and become unholy. That means they live an unholy lifestyle. He says, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, uh, fierce, despises of those that are good. Uh, uh, yeah, Paul describes this lukewarm condition. He said, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yeah, you got folks that love pleasure more than they love God. They'd rather be on, they'd rather be on the beach on a Sunday than to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's nothing wrong with going to the beach on a Sunday, but you make sure you get the presence of the Lord first. Glory to God. You put him first. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In other words, they love the gift more than they love the giver. They have exchanged the presence of God for material things. And it says here in verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away, from such turn away. And you see, this is where Paul describes in the last days these things would happen. This, in the last days, people who claim to know God would fit this description, as well as people who don't know God. And he says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In other words, they go through all the activities of the church, they go through the motions of the church, but they, but they deny the power that will make them holy. They deny the power that will cleanse them from their sin and their unrighteousness. They deny the power of the Holy Ghost, that power that will clean them up. They don't want nothing to do with that. This is like a lot of folks have been saying, well, I don't need nothing to do. I don't need this fire. He's talking about fire, Holy Ghost. We're talking about fire of God. I don't need that. Yeah, you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm because you deny the power that would get you right. Glory to God. He said, denying the power thereof. In other words, you, you turn away from the Holy Ghost. You don't want the Holy Spirit. You want Jesus, but you don't want the Holy Ghost. Yeah, hey, man, you can't have Jesus and deny the Holy Ghost. He says, from touch, from such, he didn't say sit down and have lunch with. He said, from such, turn away. He said, from such, turn away. In other words, he said, turn away from people with this characteristics or this type of lifestyle in the last days. And, and you see, this is what God is saying. 
we must not let Jesus find us lukewarm. Why? Because we just saw in Revelation, right? we're going to go back to it just a little bit. He'll spew you out. He'll spit us out of his mouth. Okay, another example of the lukewarm church. Jesus mentions in Matthew chapter 7. Come on, somebody tell him thank you tonight. You see, we've got to know this, folks, because we're in the, the time is at hand. And God is readying his bride. And he's firing us up with the fire of his presence to make us ready. Matthew chapter 7, I'll begin reading with verse 19. Jesus' description of a lukewarm condition. He says, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and hewn into the fire and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruits you shall know them. By their fruits you shall know them. You see what Jesus said? He said, By their actions you're going to know who they are. In other words, you're going to know who's lukewarm and not who is lukewarm and who is hot by their actions, by their actions. And then he says here, he says, by their fruits, you shall know them. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Now, the question is, are you doing the will of the father? Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you involved in a prayer group? Are you, are you reading the word? Are you taking in the word? Are you witnessing? Are you living by the truth? Hallelujah. You see, because these are the characteristics that Jesus is looking for in the last day church. These are the things that will make him determine you as hot, determine us as hot in Jesus' name. He says, uh, but, but he that doeth the will of my Father. You see, Jesus also said, if a person don't take up his cross and follow me daily, he's not worthy of me. Lukewarm people don't take up the cross. Lukewarm people, we say, what's the cross? The cross is the will of God for your life. The will of God for our lives is that we live holy, that we be filled with this Holy Ghost and fire, that we be obedient to God. You see, he said that he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. See, you got to be a doer. You got to be a doer. Lukewarm people are not doers. He said, and he said, verse 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done, uh, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. He said, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. In other words, they would say, oh, Lord, we did all this work in your name. And we cast out devils and we healed the sick. And, and, and Jesus said, Jesus said, I'll tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work iniquity. Why? Because of the lukewarm condition. They operated from a contaminated anointing. I mentioned this contaminated anointing on Sunday. You see, because, you see, because if we're not careful, see, the gift of God are without repentance. The gifts will work. The gifts will work even if your life is not right. You see, but if our lives are not right, that person will hear, depart from me. I don't care, I don't matter how much good work you've done. If you're lukewarm, he'll say, depart from me. I know you're not. See, Jesus describes a lukewarm person here. Hallelujah. You see, because this is so important for where we are uh, today and tonight. I'm going back to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. He says, verse 16, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, Revelation 3, 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich, increase with good, have need of nothing. In other words, they said, Jesus, I don't need you. I don't need your fire. I don't need this Holy Ghost. I don't need to be hot. He said, he says, he said, because thou sayest, I am rich, increase with goods, and have need of nothing. In other words, lukewarm condition is proud and boastful. Proud and boastful. It's a proud and boastful attitude. Other words, you see, because if you're rich, you don't have to go around telling people you're rich. You see, but it's pride. See, people who are lukewarm, uh, uh, pride is into them. And, and you see, a lukewarm person is, is, is one who, uh, like I said, is one who has pride in their heart and, and who used to be hot, but have lost the fervor and the intensity of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Other words, a lukewarm person will be whoever they are around. In other words, if, if they're around wicked, backslidden people, they'll act just like them. If they're around uh, holy, godly people, they'll act just like them. In other words, they, 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 they have a form of godliness, and, and, and they deny the power that will make them holy. Uh, and, and, and you see, this is where the church, Jesus said, would be just before his return. And we don't want to get caught in a lukewarm p position. He, he says, uh, also he says, you, you boast and say, I'm increased with goods, have need of nothing. And Jesus said, knoweth thou not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. In other words, you're deceived. He said, you don't know. Hallelujah. 
that, 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 your, that, your, that your fire is gone out and you don't even know it. You're, you're going through the motion and it's just like, just like, just like, just like, just like some, some preachers, God already fired them and they don't even know they've been fired. They're still going through the motions because of their lukewarm condition. He said, because I boast, you say I'm rich and increased with goods. That means they say, you know, I don't even need God. I don't need Jesus. I don't even need the Holy Ghost and fire. He says, uh, he said, you think you're rich. He said, but you're broke. You're bankrupt. That's what he says. He said, you're wretched. Now, what does it mean to be wretched? To, re to be wretched means to be just disgusting. I mean, you're just, you're, 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 you're just, you're, you're just sad. You're just, you're just in a, in a horrible state. In other words, a wretched, a, a wretched person is an evil, wicked person, a sinful person. In other words, to be look, lukewarm will lead to a sinful lifestyle. It, you know, the old song used to say, amazing grace, how sweet the sound to save a wretch like me. Hallelujah. A wretch, a wretched person is a wicked person. In other words, they think they're godly, but in God's eyes, they're really wicked. He says, you're poor, blind, and you're naked. In other words, and they don't even know it. You see, the reason that being lukewarm is so dangerous is that the person is deceived in the thinking they're in right standing with God, and they're not. And a person like that is not going to look for real salvation. A person like that is not going to look for any more in God. A person like that is not going to God, not going to look to be right with God. Why? Because they think they already are. They think they're already acceptable. And they're in the church. They claim to be Christian. But Jesus said, because you, you think you are, he said, but you don't know that you're poor, wretched, blind, and you're naked. He describes the condition. And, and, and he goes on to say here, he says, I counsel thee, buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, right raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Then he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open, I will come and to him and sup with him and he with me. Notice he says here, he's outside. In other words, that person think they have Jesus in their life? If you lukewarm, Jesus is outside. I know we always use this as, as he's standing at the door of your heart, knocking. He wants to come in and give you salvation. No, he's outside the, of the, outside the life. He's outside the church that's lukewarm. He's outside. He's been locked out. Jesus has been locked out. He's knocking on the door, trying to get back in his own church. Why? Because they put him out because they exchanged his presence for material things. They exchanged his presence for wealth. They changed his presence for selfishness, and they pushed him out. You see, because when you, when you don't want the Lord, when you don't want the Lord to lead you, if you don't want the Lord to guide you, you don't want the word to direct your life, Jesus will leave you. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, I'm getting out of here. But he said, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to get back in. And if they open the door, I'll come back in. That's why he says, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Sup with him means uh, intimate fellowship. In other words, Jesus want to have intimate fellowship. In other words, that's why, that's why a hot believer, a hot person will pray three times a day. A hot believer will repent on a daily and a regular basis. A hot person will, re will repent and be obedient to God. You see, but a lukewarm person will do none of those things. And that's why Jesus says, I'm outside of that person's life. I'm outside the life of that church. Why? Because they put me out. Because they, they, they want mega church. They want big ministry. They want binary. They want all this stuff. They want the blessing, but they don't want the blesser. They want the gift, but they don't want the giver. So Jesus is outside. He said, Jesus, I'm getting out of here. So, but he's knocking, trying to get back in. Now, look at what he says here. Jesus said to him, he says, buy unto me gold tried in the fire. Gold tried in the fire is really the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Uh, Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. In other words, he wants us to say amen and accept his truth. That's the goal. Why? Because uh, Psalms 12, I think it's around verse 6, he says, my word has been tried in the fire or tried in the furnace, purified seven times. Uh, just like silver or gold. In other words, he's saying, except buy from me, buy my word that has been tested with the fire of God. And, and you know, you know, when we buy, we don't buy with, with, with five and ten, twenty dollar, hundred dollar bills. No, he said, buy from me. And if we're going to buy from him, we got to buy with faith. Faith is the money. 
Faith is the currency. Faith is the spiritual currency that causes us to accept God's word. And, ex and, and we buy that gold with faith. Hallelujah. In other words, when you've got faith, true faith will do. I said true faith will be a doer. So if you're not being a doer, you don't have true faith. Hallelujah. And if you don't have true faith, you're not a doer. You're in a lukewarm state. I said you're in a lukewarm state. And you notice what he said. He said he'll spit you out. He said he'll spit us out if we're lukewarm. So you don't want to be lukewarm in these days in which we live. Because the Bible said no man knows the day nor the hour that Jesus Christ will come. And you don't want him to come and find you in a lukewarm state. So he said, buy for me gold tried in the fire. White raiment that thou mayest be clothed. In other words, that, that, that faith will give you righteousness. Well, otherwise, because righteousness come by faith. And, and the Bible says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8, I believe it is. He said, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says, buy for me a white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Then he says, anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. In other words, that eye salve is not a spirit, a uh, physical eye salve, but it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that gives revelation that will see spiritual things. You see, because Laodicea was known for uh, eye ointment. Physically, it was very popular for eye ointment that people would uh, use on their eyes because of the heat of the sun and their retina would be burnt. But they, they, they specialized in, in a product that was an eye salve. That they would anoint themselves with. Jesus said, "He said, don't use your eye salves. Get some of my eye salve. In other words, he's talking about a, the spiritual anointing of the Holy Spirit that gives a spiritual insight into these things. He said, if you if you if you if you buy from me gold, if you get white raiment from me, then Jesus said, get it from me. Don't don't make it up yourself. He said, if you use my eye salve, then it'll deal with that lukewarm condition. And then on top of that." He says, he says, and then verse, verse, verse 20, verse 19, he said, be zealous, therefore, and repent. In other words, be eager to repent. That word zealous means eager. In other words, repent quickly. Because if you don't repent quickly, you'll become backslidden. Then you become lukewarm. Then your position to G for Jesus to spew you out of his mouth. Folks, I got to tell you this like it is. Because most of the church, most of the Christian church, and, and, and many of, of the Christian leaders are in a lukewarm state. They are half-hearted. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you what I believe a lukewarm state is. In other words, there are people who used to be hot, but they've grown, they've grown lukewarm because they didn't keep that fire burning. They are half-hearted. They serve God half-heartedly. In other words, they're not all out for God. They, 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 they're giving God half of their heart, but they're keeping back half of their heart for themselves. They're hypocritical. In other words, they're one thing before one group of people and there's something else over here. In other words, they're, they're like Sunday Christians. They're holy on Sunday, but during the week, they, they, they're a totally different person. In other words, uh, lukewarm means to be half-hearted. It means to be hypocritical. And, and God doesn't want us in that state. He wants us to be on fire for him like never before because he's soon to come. And this is what it's going to take. It's going to take uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's why this message of, of the fire is so important for the church. Is to bring us out of that lukewarm state. And bring us to being on fire and hot for God. Why? Because he's coming. And he said, if he find, you, if he find us lukewarm, he's going to spit us out. Which we don't want that to happen. And that will not happen if you heed what the Spirit of God is saying. Because the lukewarm condition is the condition of the last day church just prior to Jesus' return. Another example in the scriptures of the lukewarm church, you don't have to turn there in Matthew chapter 25. The, f the five foolish virgins who had lamps and had a little bit of oil, but the oil had burned out. In other words, they started out burning, but the oil burned out. My friend, if your oil is burned out, you need to repent and refill that lamp with oil because you don't want to let the Lord come and find you like those foolish virgins. Why? Because the door got shut on them and they were outside because they were not on fire for God through the Holy Ghost. The last day of the church, the, the last day church, this Laodicean church, Jesus described as being lukewarm and would be rejected if they didn't repent. They had to change their attitude. They had to change their mindset about their own lives and put God back on the throne. And that's what God is desiring for the church today. You see, because it, 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 is, it, is, a, it is a condition that God is not pleased with, but he wants us all to be hot for God.
Being lukewarm is worse than being cold because a lukewarm person think he or she is all right with God, but they've been deceived the thinking that they're all right, but because they're lukewarm, they're out of relationship with God. Why? Because they're not excited. You see, because another, another sign of a, of, a, of a lukewarm person is you have no hunger for more. No hunger for more of God. No hunger for, for the move of God. No hunger at all. All you want to do is do your thing, live your life the way you want to. Why? Because Laodicean means the people speak. In other words, the people rule. People rule their own lives. Are lukewarm people. They're not ruled by the kingdom of God. They're not ruled by the power of the Holy Ghost, but they're ruling in their own lives. God is saying the church must not be found in that state because you have positioned yourself to be rejected. So what he says here, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. In other words, he's outside. He said, If you open, I'll come in and sup with you. He said, Be zealous, verse 19, and repent. Repent means to confess and forsake. Uh, Proverbs 28, 13. He confesses his sin and forsakes them will have mercy. In other words, you got to confess that you've been lukewarm. You got to confess that you've not been praying. You got to confess that you've not been witnessing. You got to confess. You got to repent of the fact that you have not been living the truth of God. And repentance is the major key to coming out of that lukewarm state. Coming into the realization, yes, Lord, I've been lukewarm. But tonight I make a decision to change this. And I'm going to pursue you. God, make me hungry for more of you. Help me to pursue. Help me to run with the horses. Glory to God. Help me to run with those that are in the army of the Lord, those that are on fire for God. I want to run with them. But it comes through first repentance. Then he says, then he says, uh, verse 21, the benefit. He said, to him that overcometh, Revelation 3, 21, him that overcometh, I will, I will grant to sit with me in my throne even as I have overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that had the ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. See, you got to have an ear to hear. See, some folks just don't have an ear to hear. They want to hear things, but they don't want to hear what God has to say. They want to hear what people has to say, but they don't want to hear what God has to say. You see, because that's that lukewarm state, folks. And I'm going to tell you, much of the church, much of, the, much of people who call themselves Christians, they're lukewarm, they're lukewarm, they're in trouble with God, and the bad part about it is they don't even know it because they have a false sense of security. And that's one thing religion will give people is a false sense of security. And the, not, not, not the burden, the burden of this lies at the doorstep of the leader. If, if you are a church leader, you need to be on fire for God because if you're on fire, the people will catch fire. If you're cold, the people will be cold. And if you're lukewarm, the people will be lukewarm. So every leader listening to this, you must make sure that you're ignited and you keep that fire burning. Glory to God. You're praying. You're burning wood on that altar every day, three times a day. And you're walking in right standing with God. You're hungering and thirsting for the move of God. You know God has more for you and you'll want that more. I'm talking about a hot leader. Glory to God. Leaders got to catch fire. Leaders got to be burning. Because I come to know if you when you catch fire for God, Folks will come just to watch you burn. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? Because boys, because this is what people want. This is what they're searching for. And, and we as leaders, we must be the be demonstrate the character of Jesus. Because I want you to know Jesus was on character. Uh, Jesus, Jesus was on fire. Hallelujah. He says that he says that if you overcome, overcome what? Number one, you got to overcome being cold. How do you overcome being cold? Number one, you must be born again. You must repent and accept Jesus Christ and you're alive. And then number two, you got to overcome being lukewarm. You got to come out of that, out of that, out of that hypocritical, indifferent. You got to come out, of, come out of that uh, uh, compromising state. In other words, you're compromising your your worship. You're compromising your praise. You say, "What do you mean compromising? Hey, you're, you're worshiping God, but you're worshiping an idol also." Uh, no, people who worship, try to worship God, worship idols. You're lukewarm. He said, "What's an idol? Your own life can be an idol." Yourself, your own will can be an idol. How you can have somebody in your life that you've made an idol. You see, because we must not compromise, folks. Hot people don't compromise. Hot people live by the truth. But if you're lukewarm, you will compromise. And you'll be half-hearted. To be lukewarm is to be half-hearted. 
To be half-hearted is to be hypocritical. And Job said, Job said, a hypocrite will not stand before him. Glory to God. In the book of Job, the, the writer of the book of Job, he says, a hypocrite will not stand before him. I think it's around 1619, Job 1619. He said, I believe it's a, he says, a hypocrite will not stand before him. So if you're hypocritical, you better get out of the hypocritical state and be on fire and be real for God. And God's going to be glorified. So, so the, the, the remedy is buy gold from him that has been tried in the fire. That's the word of God. You receive God's word, live by it, be a doer of it. And that word is fire by itself. Glory to God. You get that word in you. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, it's not my word like fire. and like a hammer that broke the rocks into pieces. You get this word in you. Let this word start burning in you. Glory to God. Start meditating. Start musing over this word. And that fire will be a burn bright inside you. And it'll burn up the lukewarmness. And that's why he has us at the threshing floor, folks. Is to deal with the lukewarmness. To deal with the half-heartedness. Because the last day church, Jesus prophesied, will be a church that will be lukewarm. And lukewarm means the people rule. The people rule. Not, 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 not God, not the Holy Ghost, not the leader that he's sent, but the people rule. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what the leader said. The people do what they want to do. Otherwise, they call the shots for their own life. They say what they do on a daily basis. They say whether they pray or not three times a day. They, they decide. It's not God. It's not the leader. It's not the Holy Ghost, but they make the decision for their own lives. That's a lukewarm individual. And that individual is positioned to be spit out by Jesus, to be spewed out of his mouth, and you don't want that to happen to you. Glory to God. That's why he had me teaching on this fire, teaching this fire of the Holy Ghost and power, so that lukewarmness can be dealt with at the threshing floor. Glory to God. That lukewarmness is chaff. And the fire must burn up the chaff of lukewarmness in your life. Repentance is what must come. So the cold person must repent and accept Jesus. The lukewarm church, lukewarm person must repent and receive and, and, and desire the fire of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Desire the fire of the Holy Spirit into their lives. And keep that fire burning. Glory to God. Keep that fire burning with prayer. Keep that fire burning with obedience. Keep that fire burning with the word of God. And then you will not be rejected when Jesus Christ comes. Because the last state of the Christian church, Jesus said, will be a lukewarm church. Hallelujah. He said, if you're lukewarm, he'll spit us out. But I believe that those of you that heed the warning, that those of you that recognize that you need God, you need Jesus, you need this Holy Ghost fire, will be the ones that will be on fire and you'll be a part of that Philadelphia church, which is the only church Jesus had no rebuke for. And that the only church that he was well pleased with was the church of Philadelphia. But he's outside knocking, trying to get back in to your life. He's knocking trying to get back in to your church pastor to your, he's trying to get back into the church because you we put him out many have put him out with our lifestyle by the way we live we have exchanged pleasure we have exchanged money we have exchanged all of this material stuff for the presence of god and god wants us to catch fire again by repenting and making the change my friend if you don't know jesus christ tonight boy i had to labor this tonight because this is so important because much of the church, much of the Christian church, is in a lukewarm position. And that's not good. Because Jesus Christ is about to come. That's why we're at the threshing floor. That's why we're at the place of separation from the things that mean us no good. The things that God cannot use. And one of the things he cannot use is a lukewarm church. One of the things God cannot use is a lukewarm Christian. You've got to be on fire. Glory to God. And you got to not just say it, you got to demonstrate it by your actions. You got to prove that the fire of God has touched your life. Glory to God. By the things you do, by the things you say, and by the lifestyle you carry on. That you're the same on a Sunday, you're the same way on a Monday. Hallelujah. You're the same way around Christian people, you're the same way around unsaved people. Hallelujah. You don't bend to suit people, but you stay strong 
and you've got to be the light of the world. Like I told you, light keeps us ahead of darkness. Light is faster than darkness. Light disperses the darkness. And the fire is the light of God in our lives. Can you say amen? If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're cold. You know you're wicked. You know you hadn't been living right. You know you're not ready to meet God. Pray this prayer. That's a sign of a cold person. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, say it. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. And I make the decision to repent right now of all of my sins. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. To give me a new life. To fill me with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, yes, God. Ask him for that fire. Because I need the Holy Ghost and fire. So that I can be pleasing to you. And accepted by you when you come. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Come on, say, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I'm saved. My friend, you prayed that prayer. You're saved, and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, if you are a Christian, a disciple, maybe in a Protestant religion, I would say Protestant religion, that's Baptist, Methodist, uh, AME, uh, Lutheran, Piscop Episcopalian, Roman Catholic, if you're in one of these religions, there's a good chance that you are lukewarm. Why? Because pr most Protestant religions don't believe in the fire of the Holy Ghost. So if the, if, the, if, the, if the denomination don't believe in the fire of the Holy Ghost, the people are going to be lukewarm. Not only the people will be lukewarm, the leaders will be lukewarm. That's why Jesus addressed the angel. He addressed the messenger to the church of the Laodicea. And if you're in any one of these denominations, and you could be you could be in an apostolic Holy Ghost denomination, but you're still living in sin. You're still practicing sin because hot people don't practice sin. Glory to God. Hot people get rid of the sin out of their life. Sexual sin, immorality, not a sign of a hot believer. So if you're in any of those states, any of those conditions, whether you're Protestant, Baptist, Methodist, Church of God, Christ, AME, any type of Protestant religion that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, you need to pray this prayer. You need to repent. That's why Jesus told him in verse 19, Revelation 3, 19, he said, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, let's do that. Say, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for revealing my lukewarm condition. And I repent of lukewarmness. Come on, say it. I repent of indifference. I repent of half-heartedness. I repent of being a hypocrite. I repent tonight, Lord. Forgive me. And Lord, ignite me with the fire of God. Come on, ask him for the fire. Ignite me with the fire of God that I be acceptable to you, pleasable to you in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer and really mean it, God has taken away your lukewarmness. Now, the fire of the Holy Spirit, I say, touch your life right now. Touch your heart right now. May the fire of the Holy Spirit set you ablaze with the passion of God. Hallelujah. God, that that everything that God's fire provides, you will possess. And I bless you tonight in Jesus' name. I say, stay hot. Stay on fire. Uh, hallelujah. Keep eating this word up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep listening to, the, to these Bible studies. Keep, let, keep hanging out with us on Sunday morning. Glory to God. And then you will not be found in a lukewarm state when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Because he said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That means once saved, always saved will not fly. In other words, that means you got to stay hot for God. You got to stay hungry for God. You got to always be that witness. You got to always be excited about God. And He must be your first love in Jesus' name. My Lord, may the Lord bless you tonight. Hope you got something out of this. Hope it stirred something in you as a leader to recognize how you've been leading God's people, how your lifestyle has been going, and that you have made a decision. You're going to stay on that straight, narrow path that leads to eternal life. God's going to be glorified. Until the next broadcast, this is, this is Pastor Rufus. I love you. May the Lord bless you. And may you stay on fire for God. May you come out and demonstrate that you're not lukewarm, but you're going to join the army of the Lord that's on fire for God. I'm talking about Job's army. Glory to God. Fire burns before us. Flame burns behind us. And, and, and not one is cut down. Why? Because the fire of God is intense over this last day army. And that's what God wants you to be a part of. And the Lord bless you. Till the next time, love you. In Jesus' name, remember Sunday morning, 1030.
feel the fire alive again. Join us then for another study, another teaching from the Word of God. Love you. Have a great rest of the night, and we'll see you in Jesus' name. God bless you.